am going to do Jennifer Aniston's natal chart as requested. Okay, so here we go. All right. Um, Jennifer Aniston was born with sun 20, 23 degrees in the fourth house. Okay. And she's a Libra rising 25 degrees. Now, this chart, when I first saw the chart, I, first of all, look at the stelliums and where they're placed in the chart to determine if this person is, uh, if this person's energy is alpha or beta. And she's got stellians in the second house and in the 12th house and in the fourth house, she's got two, two planets. The second house is a very reserved house, has to do with stability. The 12th house has to do with hidden matters, so it's reserved also. The fourth house is a reserved house because it has to do with privacy and family and things you don't show to the public. But the sixth house is not so private, and she does have a stellium here. She's got three planets here. So she only has one house that's not reserved, but the rest are, and they got stelliums on them. They have activities on them. So I would say that she's a very low key based on the first impression of the chart and where they're placed. Okay, so let's get started. First of all, She's a uh, Libra rising, 25 degrees. So um, her personality is very charming, very likable. She's ruled by the planet Venus of attraction. Um, she's very well liked. As, you know, the media is always saying, oh, she's the girl next door. She's a very calm and nice person. She is, you know, she does, uh, she, she used to do the, the series of Friends. So, yeah, she's, she's very likable. She's got here the Libra rising. Majority of her first house, is ruled by Scorpio, though. She only has got, like, five degrees of Libra and the rest of Scorpio. So, majority of her personality is very reserved, very intense, and she keeps she keeps to herself. Plus, she also has Mars and Scorpio. Mars and Scorpio, man, they, they could be very hard people, by the way. Um, they could take revenge. They could be very secretive. And if they're hurt very badly, they will try their best to get back at the person that hurt them. Okay, that's Mars. You just don't want to make an enemy with Mars in, in Scorpio. Okay, they could be they could be criminals. Now, she's got it. She's got Mars 23 degrees, like right in between, cusping between the first house and the second house. Okay, so it's not really in the first house all the way, you know, like smack close to the ascendant where you could say, okay, she's a troublemaker. Um, like Nicki Minaj has it and other celebrities that have it right here in the first, you know, they, no, she's got it right here between the first house and the second house, okay? And the second house has to do with money, with possessions, with values. So she has a lot of energy here. She puts a lot of energy to her value system, okay? So I think she's got a lot of morals and she tries not to look for problems, which is the opposite of having it like right over here. She tries not to look for problems because her Mars is like tucked in the second house of stability, which is ruled by Taurus. Taurus is an earth sign. And, you know, when you put fire on earth, what happens? It just dampers the fire. Okay. Even though it is on, 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 uh, on Scorpio, which Scorpio could be, you know, kind of a furious, furious sign. But still, she her, her energy level kind of like, you know, goes down. So she's not really much of a troublemaker. She's very much of a steady person. Okay. And, of course, she does go after what she wants because it is on, on Taurus in the second house in, in in Scorpio. So she does have a very big drive when it comes to making money, all right, and um, putting energy to the things she values, all right. Now, she's got Neptune here, 20, 20 degrees in Scorpio in the second house, which means that she likes to live really nice in her fantasy dream home. Like, her ornaments inside her house, I have this placement, by the way, they tend to be like like a fairy tale, okay? She likes to have her, she likes to organize her place ideally the way she likes, you know, in, in like in a dreamy atmosphere with decors that, you know, pertain to Bohemian also, but more of depth because it, it is in Scorpio, by the way. Now, she's got the moon here, 23 degrees, which it means where she's the most comfortable in. And again, it's a very reserved house. She's very comfortable, you know, uh, working, you know, her comfort is having a lot of money. That's her thing. That's her That's her concern, having money, having a, a place to fall back and having stability in her house, That's in, in her life. So that's where her comfort zone is. She's got in Sagittarius, which makes her a very fun, loving person, okay? She thinks like a Sagittarius. She's very wise, very wise woman. Sagittarius people, they have a very, 
wise philosophical mentality, okay? When you have the moon there, the moon symbolizes your mentality, how you think, okay? Third house is empty. So third house is a very energetic shatter house that likes to deal with other people and likes to socialize. She doesn't have anything here. Now, in the fourth house of privacy in the home, things you don't see, she's got Mercury and she's got the sun. Jennifer Aniston doesn't really talk much. Like, when I see her on TV, like, there's not much she comments about. And if she comments, it's just a simple comment. And she's got here zero, zero degrees in Aquarius. And she also got the sun 23 degrees in Aquarius. So she likes to be low-key, man. She really does. She doesn't really like to be boisterous. She doesn't like to voice her opinion that often. And when she says something, it's more rational and logical manner. Okay, as she's got it here in Aquarius. All right. Also, she's got Mercury cusping I would say between Capricorn because it is zero zero degrees Aquarius so it is kind of like a cusp in Capricorn so when she talks she tries to say something of importance and that makes rational sense and that goes right to the point she doesn't really like to you know gossip or you know and all that stuff she likes to stay reserved in the fourth house now 12th house she's got Jupiter five degrees and she's got uh three degrees in Uranus in Libra and Pluto, she's got it in uh, the 12th house, almost into the um, 11th house, the cusping between 12th and 11th, 24 degrees in Virgo. So she's got Jupiter here in the, in the 12th house, meaning that she does enjoy solitude. Anything that you have good here, okay, like the sun or the moon or Jupiter, signify the person likes to be alone. They enjoy their company and they got... You know, they got good karma here in past life, okay? She also has Uranus here, three degrees in Libra and in the 12th house. So it could also symbolize hidden enemies that suddenly, things that suddenly happen that she's not subconsciously aware of. It's the 12th house has to do with the subconscious. So having Uranus here, the unexpected, could mean that things could rise up for her that she's not really aware of, okay? And I can see how this pertains to the Angelina and Brad thing. Like, she really wasn't aware of what was going on. And then all of a sudden, poof, it just fell out, out of her, uh, her her blind zone in the 12th house, right? Now, she's got 24 degrees Pluto in the 12th house. And having Pluto there in the 12th house to symbolize, and also cuss me between the, the 11th house, is that she's got to have power between the 12th and the 11th house. Meaning the, the 11th house has to do with society, friends, social networks. The 12th house has to do with the hidden Okay, so I think she feels very much in control, being hidden and tucked away, but at the same time, keeping her foot in the door in the 11th house, okay, of still being there, still being recognized, uh, you know, and, and talked about, but at the same time, having a foot in the 12th house of being, you know, reserved and not too many people know too much about her. That's where she has her control in, all right? And it's true, people can't really tell what she's thinking or she's feeling. She just gives a little glimpse here and there of, you know, how she feels. But people just keep wondering, okay? So it's kind of mysterious. That's a mysterious aspect of her, which is in the 12th house. Now, her 6th house, and I put I put 5th, sorry. Let me, let me correct it. Um, yes, I got to correct it. 6th house, this is the 5th house. The 6th house. She's got uh, the north node, 2 degrees in Aries. She's got Venus, 9 degrees in Aries. And she's got Saturn, 21 degrees in Aries. So they're in, like, the pioneer constellation in the sixth house of activity, of routine, health. And having uh, Saturn here could signify that she's really got to rebuild herself in her health, in her, in her, in her work. And she really has to work really hard, okay, in order to get things you know, that she really wants. But also, the person that uh, that she would be attracted to or that has an attraction to would be working with her, okay? Also, her aim in life is to work and to be of service of other people, all right? Enjoys a good challenge, as she's got here, Venus and Aries. They always enjoy a challenge when it comes to love. Um, and they love to be first, and they have a lot of pride. Like, they really wouldn't comment that much if a person cheats on them or if the person does something bad. They really wouldn't comment that about them because they feel like they have the upper hand. Okay, Aries is always that sign that, okay, that person's not good for me. I'm better than them, so I'll just forget them. That's how they feel. So she's got that Venus and Aries here, so I could understand that about her. She's got 23 degrees of the sun 
in the fourth house, and let me say something, the, the sun is like cusping between the fourth and the fifth, all right, because she was, uh, uh, she's a Libra rising 24 degrees, so every 24 degrees, you know, you have a different house, so she's kind of like between the fourth and the fifth house here with the sun, and it is squaring her, her, her Mars 23 degrees in Scorpio, okay, so having these two squaring, all right, the sun, that's between the fourth and the fifth house of fun and relationships and romance with uh, uh, the house of of, uh, of self and also the house of value could signify a, a love affair or scandal, okay? And it's very hard angle. So this is between here and here, and this one's between here and here, and they're at hard angles with each other. And this is the house of privacy. So this could signify the cheating that went on with Brad and, and, uh, and Angelina. Now, this affects her house of values, of what she owns, of what she has. And the sun here between the, the fifth and the fourth of privacy and romance is just a, a very, very hard angle. It's not even semi-squaring. It's directly squaring. Now, 23 degrees of the sun is actually sextiling the moon uh, in the second house. So, so these are very, this is a very helpful uh aspect actually sex cells are very helpful you know and it spices spices things up so whatever does happen here between the fourth and the fifth house that's affected by mars could actually aid that person in attaining uh you know valuable things or monetary gain and this brings me back to any scandal that that they use your name in 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 your career and when it comes to hollywood you get money. So she's been on the covers of the magazine ever since Brad went with Angelina. She's been gaining a lot of money and royalties because every time they're on, they're always using her name like she really has anything to do with it. I mean, come on. And they use her name, and guess what? Jennifer gets money. So it's sort of like a, it benefited her in the long run. And this is also in, a, in an angle, okay? It's not even semi-sextiling. It's actually directly sextiling. Now, again, she's got here Uranus semi-opposing her north node. So Uranus, things that popped up suddenly in the 12th house throughout her whole life, actually helped her in her path of what she was doing in the 6th house of work. So it pretty much set the tone, Uranus here, set the tone to where she was heading. She's always known as the lady that got betrayed. Okay, and that's always been her image ever since that, which I think it's wrong. I don't think people should be basing on other people's relationship, but that's how Hollywood did it. I mean, they had a certain purpose, and I think they were they were trying to convey a certain mythology mythology through the medium. Okay, and they, they used the example of having Jennifer as Venus and Angelina as Neptune and uh, Brad as Zeus. <laughs> so they carried on this this storyline for so many years and evidently you could see it here is like this is what propels her in the sixth house of work this is what defines her at work so now going on to what man would be good for jennifer it's in the it's in the 12th house and he's he crossbred between libra and pisces okay he's a very fair person and he's a very caring individual with a lot of compassion the one she should stay away from is the man that inflates her ego keeps activity hidden behind the scenes, as is it in Scorpio, and a man that could have a generous amount of money. Okay. Now, before I close this chart, I wanted to mention that she's got two planets in the house where her where her north node is pointing, which is getting in her way, which is a woman. And Saturn is the planet of hardship and struggles and obstacles. So wherever she goes in her life, she's always going to have some other woman standing in the way of where her direction is in the sixth house of work and a bunch of, of obstacles in the way also. So this has been Jennifer Aniston's natal chart reading. If you guys would like a natal chart reading with me, go to the description below and all the information is there. And I hope to see you guys soon. Thank you for tuning. Thank you guys. Hey guys, check out my music channel where I write my own music, sing and play piano. Make sure to subscribe.